Hello folks and welcome back to Let's Play Free Space. Now in the last episode we managed to uh, scrape by the skin of our teeth and uh, get one shield prototype uh, to safety which has paid us off uh, handsomely uh, in the form of new training missions where we are supposed to learn how to use said shielding systems and also um, I guess new missile systems? I'm not sure. As you know, research has been yeah, there, the, there it goes about the shields. In addition to the new shield ah, yeah, so um, homing missiles that uh, aren't just like our previous homing missiles, which uh, had horrible, horrible homing ca capabilities and just. I never use them, but these uh, these ones require a lock. They are a lot faster, a lot more maneuverable, and a uh, lot more likely to hit your targets. So, yeah, I'm recording this and uh, putting this in to the LP. But uh, if you don't just want to see a training mission where I probably sit around waiting for stuff to happen for a long long time then you can feel free to just skip to the next part I think when we will be again flying proper against the Shivans. but yeah uh, after the showing of the last video I think I need a bit more practice <laughs> this, this, this isn't going to be getting any easier even though it kinda is with the shielding technology, but still the missions are getting harder and harder in a rapid succession, so <clears throat> yeah, let's just go for it and uh... Alright, first we'll cover use of the aspect seeking interceptor missiles. Kay. Note that you are fully equipped with interceptors. Unlike heat seeking missiles, and immediately the I've already forgotten how to... In order for an Switch my well missiles to is much fire both banks at the same time. The aspect seeker will track its target anywhere in space. Once the heat seeker loses track of its target, it is not likely to reacquire lock. Yeah, basically what I said uh, about those earlier missiles, the heat seekers that we had, uh, kind of horrible. Yeah, and that's the aspect diamond. Once aspect it diamond. To your target, Why am I even indicator. bothering this to explain this stuff to you? You are the trainer is doing a lot better job at it. The they also and quite a there's a reason why I want the a double interceptor missile, so both banks firing at the same time. Yeah, it takes three seconds, as he said. These aren't really made for targeting subsystems. They are uh, later on. I think the disruptor missiles, which are actually really good at it, um, especially against the like, capital ships, those can work wonders. And also the dis disruptor lasers uh, can be used to accomplish that. But uh, yeah, the, like just using regular missiles to do this is. Uh, sort of a waste because I believe it does just a tiny bit less damage um, don't go quoting on me well about that but it's again how do I fucking turn off the subsystem targeting Ah, completely forget all my key bindings. So yay, it's a 
really good thing that I actually uh, wanted to do this. Uh, You're low on interceptors. You should rearm soon. Support ship being deployed. I'll do this training mission because yeah, I've forgotten pretty much everything that is even remotely useful. Used to be a different uh, story when I played this back in the day, because yeah, as soon as this game ga came out, uh, I spent uh, basically all my free time on this for a week, or possibly even two weeks after that, and uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, some of the keys got so ingrained in me that I tried to d use rearming and call calling for help keys in the like, games that didn't have such things at all. <laughs> hmm. One more. After this one, I mean. Uh, there we go. Excellent job. Now it's time to destroy some moving targets. In order Yay. to get an aspect lock on a moving target, you must keep the target's lockbox in a fixed location. Not usually all that difficult, though some few ships. When the first drone enters, target it and acquire lock. Try to keep the target indicator in the center of your HUD reticle. Yeah, there are some few of Once the Shivan crafts um, quite adept at doing uh, the annoying type of flight, which uh, which is basically uh, okay. Let's put it this way: mm, they fly with afterburners. And uh, basically, come to a dead stop, turn rapidly, and afterburner away from you. So uh, if you're following them, d well that done. dead stop now makes you almost crash control. into them and Let's do a, like an evasive maneuver. And uh, then uh, after they afterburner away from you, uh, they're like rapidly going away from you, and yeah. It can be a pain to target those ones, especially uh, if there are multiple enemies, because well, one of them will do its damnedest to uh, just harass you while the others get a firing solution and uh, try to finish you off. The AI isn't stupid in that, that can use that kind of albeit kind of rudimentary tactics, but still. Uh, I believe uh, that the m missiles do slightly less damage uh, if you fire both banks at the same time uh, than if you would have fired the set same missiles individually. But it takes so much less time, it's like double as uh, effective time-wise to fire missiles uh, at both banks at once. Yeah, now we're learning about missiles. Just check if I, yeah, what controls are. Right with those. Hello. Corresponding section of your shield integrity gauge will flash. Observe. Right, Note sir. The front of On your shield way. is flashing as if you've taken damage. Yeah, and uh, shield management is going to be a large portion of the rest of this game series. And I will be fumbling in the middle of the combats to uh, manage my shield quadrants. Accelerate this process to save time. Now observe as the front quadrant of your shield repairs its <laughs> Which has already happened. Now your shield has recharged back to full strength. Next we'll cover shield yeah. management. Uh, this is what I meant earlier. There are a number of ways you can manage your shield. The simplest is the equalize quadrants function. Yeah, so if one portion is more damaged than the others, uh, it just uh, Basically, 
reduces energy in the others and pumps it to the one that's damaged. Like so. Uh, this is uh, the quickest and most useful, in my view, but at times it's really important to either keep buffing your rear shields or front shields for obvious reasons. Front shields when you're, when you're going for capital ships, uh, like doing attack runs, and uh, aft shields when you're like running away from said capital ship after doing the run and also when you have to just ignore several targets of opportunity just to like get somewhere as fast as possible because uh, enemies jumped uh, at the rear uh, next to some ship you're supposed to be protecting and so on. Uh, I never really found uh, all the many critical uses for side shield management. They're basically there to protect you slightly when um, dogfighting, because enemies will pop a couple of shots at your um, side shields uh, on those occasions. Uh, mainly for me they are just like reserve banks from which to uh, transfer strength to the more important shield quadrants such as front and aft. I'd love to uh, there be a button in the shield management that just uh, said uh, maximize front and aft at the expense of the size, but uh, no such luck. Anyway, that's the, uh, that's the training done. It took me like 10 minutes, it's not too bad. And yay, more wings. I think those are a third, no, a second pair of training wings. So yeah, uh, again, once again, I should say thank you guys for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Let's Play Free Space. Bye for now.